Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, so today uh, we will see uh, or discuss Bash script basics and Docker. Um, in your challenge document, you are asked to write some uh, Bash or Python scripts to automate um, a task, basically. Uh, so Bash is a programming language, just like Python. Um, it has its own strong uh, features and it has its own, um, what you call it, uh, disadvantage. Uh, it's good for uh, file manipulation, uh, most uh, web administrators or in general IT admins use uh, Bash because it's easier, but uh, sometimes it, it, it's hard to uh, learn than uh, other programming languages like Python, right? So um, let me just, so this is basically, uh, we, we can write uh, bash uh, on the terminal, uh but we want to write a script right like a uh, python we 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 can use first we can use the uh interpreter the this is the the interpreter for python so i can write and command on on the python shell right i can write a python code here like print um, Hello, Iaya. Yes. Uh, you are not sharing your oh. screen. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let me just share my screen. Oh, okay. Is it visible? Okay. So um, uh, if I want to write a Python code, uh, I can write the, the code on, uh, on the shell, right? So to start the, the shell, what I will do is IPython uh, or Python, uh, in your case, uh, it depends. Uh, so I can write a Python code here, like uh, print, uh, hello world, right? So that will display the, the string hello world, right? So this is the interpreter. Uh, the IPython is like the, the Python interpreter, right? Similarly, we will have a, a bash interpreter. Let me exit this one. Uh, if I say echo, uh, Uh, hello world as you can see it it displays hello right so echo is like print uh, for bash for bash right uh, our our objective is to write a script like a python script which means we have to create uh, a dot sh file the extension for bash uh, is sh right um let me open this i'm gonna create a folder uh, bash intro and then all right uh on Sorry. Now I'm inside the, the folder, so I can create a, a dust sh file, which is a batch file. Uh, let's say uh, intro dot sh. So I will say touch. So that will create the file. As you can see here, we have a uh, intro.sh so these are bash commands right 
so if I come here, uh, I have the the sh, I mean the, the the shell script. So what the first thing we need to do is we need to set the uh, interpreter for the bash uh, for, for the bash to use, right? So in that case, we usually use hashtag exclamation and then uh, bin no uh, bin bash so that's that's the interpreter uh, and then you can write your uh, bash commands like this one like hello right so i will come to the uh, a terminal uh, bef yeah le let's just try it we we can have two ways the first one is bash and then intro.sh, but it's not going to run. Um, oh, it runs, okay. But usually, uh, what you'll get is it, it's not executable. Uh, if you say dot bash, this is the other, sorry, the other way to run uh, the, the, the script. As you can see, no such file or directory. But there is, oh no, dot into raw dot sh. Uh, yeah. As you can see, it says permission denied, right? Because it's not executable. So what we will do is we will change it to uh, an executable file uh, using ch mod uh, plus x and then the, the, the file name intro.sh now it's executable which means we can run it right so we'll run it like this one uh no dot where am i dot intro dot sh why is it Oh, it says no. Oh, bin bash. Sorry, did, what did I do? Uh, oh, the forward slash before that. Okay. It's in, in bin and then bash. Uh, that's the problem. Uh, it, it's a good thing. What it says is it's a bad interpreter, right? Which means this sorry this is not the place where the interpreter resides so before because we we forgot the forward slash uh, so that that should work now so if we do this as you can see we get the the hello world so the 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 main point here is at the beginning, you have to set the interpreter for the bash, right? And which is hashtag exclamation space forward slash pin forward slash bash. After that, you can write uh, your uh, bash commands, bash commands. And once you do that, you don't forget to change the, the permission uh, using chmod plus x and then the, the script name the script name once you do that you can run it either using bash the uh, script name or dot forward slash the uh, script name uh, is, is that clear is, is that clear okay uh, if you have if you guys have any question you can raise it so this is how we uh, write a bash script so just like any other programming language, uh, we need to know about uh, variables, conditional statements, uh, uh, looping, uh, function, etc. Right. So uh, for 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 today, uh, we will see some of them. Right. For example, for for variables, what we can do is um, we can experiment it on the shell if you if you want. I can say name is equals to, and then uh, maybe Ababa, right? 
So in there, nothing happens. We just assign the uh, value above to the variable name, uh, name, right? So name is a variable name, and it's a variable, and above is the value. Uh, so if I want to see it, uh, I will say echo name. So this will display the value of the variable name, right? As you can know what, uh, okay, sorry. If it's a variable, we need to have a dollar sign. Uh, name equals my mistake. And then uh, name, uh, so up above. And then we can echo it. What's going on? Uh, name up above. Oh. Maybe in, in, in this case, it's not without a string. Oh. oh. Sorry, I was supposed to use the, the dollar sign. It's a variable, no, it's not like the, the Python, right? So that's above. Uh, here you can put it in quotation or without quotation, but when you write scripting, you have to put it in quotation, right? So we can we can do the same in, in our script, in our script. Uh, like name, <coughs> equals above uh, I'm not sure about these spaces right so now I can I can say uh, dot intro sh so it will display hello world and then above right Hello world. Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't display it, so I need to say, um, okay, my name is Ababa, or your name is Ababa, right? Hello world. Uh, my name is Ababa, right? But don't forget this dollar sign. We use the dollar sign in front of the the variable name. Uh, sometimes we use a uh, curly bracket. Uh, like this one. Uh, if we want to, uh, what you call it, concatenate um, something, right? Uh, it's like if I... Mm, I, I hope... Uh, sport and if i want this to be food and if i say i like i say i like football right so if i don't use this i, I can't i can't i cannot uh, concatenate ball uh, like this because this is a variable and this is a string, right? So what we we'll do is we will have them with curly bracket. So I save this and run it. Uh, as you can see, like for uh, hello, yeah, yeah. Oh. Hello. Uh, you are we are breaking up. Uh, am I? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. What about now? Is the screen visible? Yes, yes, we are we are seeing your screen, but the voice is breaking up.
Am I audible now? Yes, yes, you are. Sorry. So. Is my screen visible? Okay. Uh, so, as I was saying, uh, if you want to concatenate uh, two strings, uh, here uh, I, we, I need to enclose the, the variable with curly brackets, right? Uh, because if these curly brackets are not here, uh, this will interpret it as this is like a one variable, right? That's not what I want to display. What I want to display is I want to concatenate this ball with uh, the foot or the, the sport variable. So I will enclose the variable with a curly bracket in the ball. So this will display I like football. The, the value of sport is foot. So it will be football, right? I hope that's clear. So if I run this, um, yeah, I like football, right? Uh, so this is how we declare uh, a, a variable or how we use uh, a variable. Uh, the, the second one is uh, how do we get an input from the, the user, right? So uh, here what I want to do is uh, I want to echo first what is your name, right? So this will, uh, like, it's like a prompt, right? And then uh, uh, I will say read a name. So like name is a, a variable. And then uh, I will say echo. Uh, Hello name. So this name is like a variable that will be given a value from the uh, <laughs> from the terminal, and then that will be displayed here. So I need to pass uh, an argument here. So if I run this without any argument. Uh, no, it's it's waiting, so I have to give uh, the the a name above, and then it displays hello above, right? So this is like accepting uh, an input from a keyboard, like input in in Python, right? I hope that's clear. Uh, if you guys have any question, you can ask. It's just the basics. Once you understand the the, the basics, uh, the the complicated scripts that you see uh, here and there uh, will be much clearer. Uh, I, I I usually confused with those uh, uh, scripts. Yeah, so. Uh, it's 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 a good place to start from the basics. All right. So what next? Uh, we can also use uh, arguments. Uh, I'm gonna just follow this one. Uh, I will I will send you guys this if you want. Um, uh, yeah, we can we can uh, get different. Uh, I mean, we can echo or get different arguments at a time, like echo greeting uh, and then name. So that's like, hello, uh, David Dojo, right? So when you run that, you, you will have hello, uh, Dave Dojo. Uh, or if you, uh, okay, let's experiment this one. So here, what we will do is a uh, name, uh, Ababa. And then greet salam. And then when we echo, we can say 
uh, grid and then uh, sorry name so if we run this uh what whoa maybe i didn't save it uh grid not found uh grid name what's your name Uh, uh, maybe, okay. Hello? Oh, nine five. Uh, Why is it not working? It's the, the, the space. Have it. Yeah. Salama uh, Baba. So they, 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 that's the because of the space. Yeah. Um, or you can use uh, the the positions if you want uh hello there and then take the the first argument from the input because the zero position is the 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 okay uh let me do this like two and one uh, i can do zero if you want it's it's a positional argument when you uh, input, uh, it will uh, take the, the first argument in that case, and in this case, the second argument, in this case, the, the third, I mean, the zero position. The zero position is the command uh, dot this dot intro. Uh, let me just show you this one. Hello, up, uh, right? So this is zero, one, two. So if I run it, as you can see, hello above dot intro. So this is the zero argument. The the the, the bash or everything is separated in space will be counted. That's what it means. So this is one, I mean this is zero, one, two. Right? So that's the the a second argument. And that's the uh, third argument. That's the first argument. It's a bit confusing. Um, yeah, so just consider or remember the zero one is this this one. Uh, is, is, is that clear? Uh, this argument thing is it clear? Okay. Uh, what next? um yeah one two three uh, we can use those bobby buddy etc uh you can use at that means all uh it's like um, i think uh no i cannot use that uh, is it inside or outside? Inside, not outside. And then echo hello two and you can use at which means all one two and then everything which means we have to pass two arguments uh, above, above, 
as you can see hello ababa hello kabada hello ababa kabada so this displays every argument or this takes every argument i hope that's clear uh, user input uh, i already showed you that uh, use read or you can use uh, minus p uh, for prompt i believe yeah read minus p what's your name and then the variable so this the, the input from the keyboard will be assigned to name and then you can uh, echo that hi there uh, your name will come to uh, uh, dave dojo uh, comments is using hashtag right uh, if i say hash introduction to bash basics this will not be executed it's it's a comment right uh it will not be displayed either as you can see there is no introduction to bash so commenting is using hash in bash i hope that's clear uh arguments we already saw that uh arrays uh, we can uh, declare arrays using uh, open bracket and then we pass the variables that we want so i'm gonna copy this one my array is equals to uh, this will be useful uh yeah this is this is fine uh useful when we do um looping looping because it needs um items i mean lists or iteratives so we can echo them one by one like this Oh, what did that? Sorry, echo my array. And then the, the position. Uh, dollar. So if we run this, we will get the first parameter, I believe. Oh. We don't have any arguments. Uh, my have it, have it, have it. As you can see, it gives me the second one, right? Because this is zero, that's one, that's two. So if you change that two, uh, you will have three. Right. Uh, what will happen if I say four? In Python, you will have uh, uh, index out of range, right? What about this one? Here, we, we don't see anything. Uh, even we don't get an error message, an error message. Um, if you say minus one, that's like uh, Python, the last element, right? So in this case, we will have uh, three three uh, if you want to display everything you can use at that means display everything that's one two three right it's, it's almost like a python array except the the declaration is different it's different am i audible uh do you guys have any questions is it clear yes it's clear uh, yeah yeah okay all right uh so we have the arrays uh uh, slicing and indexing uh, you can you can check that one uh what i want to do is conditional <coughs> conditional is 
just like any uh, if else statement, but the, the syntax is a bit different. The syntax yes. is a bit different. If condition, uh, then you do uh, the thing else, uh, else if, etc. Right? But the 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 block, right? In 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 Python, uh, a block of code is represented by an ind an indentation, right? or in C++ or in Java, we use curly brackets to show that uh, a block of code. If the condition satisfied, execute all these codes below or within the uh, curly brackets, right? But in, in Bash, uh, we will say if, and to show that the end of that if statement, we use if, we use if. That's the only difference. Um, so the if statements you can check those are like conditions automatic operators that's not where what we are interested in this is what we are interested in so the the condition i mean the command or the syntax is if square bracket and you put uh the the, the condition and then then and then the command you want to execute if this condition is satisfied execute the following and then to show that the, the, the end of the if statement we use we say fi fi right uh, as you can see here uh, p uh, we we accept a name from the keyboard and if negative z name then echo uh, please enter your name that means if it doesn't uh, exist, if it's not like a string, uh, equal that one. In the Gananda Skapanda matter. If else, we, we just use uh, else. We just use else. So what we can do is, um, I'm gonna delete this. Uh, read minus p uh, enter your name and then the name variable all right uh, and then we check if uh, not this uh, let's say above And then we use semicolon, and then uh, we say echo, hello name, like hello Abeba. Uh, else, we echo wrong username. Uh, wrong username. Something like that. So we 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 finish it with uh, fi, fi. So we save this, and then if we run it, it will ask for a name, and then I say Ababa, and then it says hello Ababa. If I run it, and then if I say Kapada, it should say wrong username, wrong username. That's the condition. It's not double condition. It's not double equal. Uh, and then we have then, and then we do the, the command here. Else, if there is another alternative, if this is false, do this. Otherwise, if there is no any um, other condition, you can stop with uh, fi. I hope that conditional is clear um yeah i think this, this is enough for us uh, to write a script for the uh, different tasks that you are asked in your challenge document and also to uh, create the uh, docker setup for different uh, dashboard 
uh, web apps like uh, Redash, uh, Air, I mean, Superset, uh, Metabase, etc. Right? Uh, are there any questions? Is it clear about the variables, uh, conditions? If you clearly understand these two, it's much enough to uh, write the, the, the scripts. You just need to know the uh, bash commands for performing the task. Any questions? No? Is everything clear? Okay. Uh, so, beforehand, uh, I have wrote a script. Uh, I'm going to close this one. And, wow. All right, I can do that. And then code. Okay, so let me do that one. Here I have a uh, docker superset.sh. Docker superset.sh. What I want to do here is I want to create uh, a superset uh, image or uh, a container for superset, right? So uh, as we uh, as we said, we start by setting the interpreter, right? And then we check if uh, Docker is installed or not. Uh, but by the way, you, you need to install Docker and Docker Compose. For uh, window users, uh, you have to use WSL. Uh, for Mac users, I believe you you can download uh maybe let's check the the uh, website uh get docker i believe get docker.com i think uh if you if you come here uh, you will have the the instructions for mac uh i think it's just downloading something and you put it in the app store but for windows uh, they they you, you need uh, let me just open this one um system requirement you need to have a wsl2 backend so you have to follow this and uh, install docker and then uh, docker compose once you have that, uh, everything will work. Or you will have uh, a Docker desktop. Uh, similarly, for uh, Linux, um, for Linux, you can you can run it uh, from the command line. Uh, I think if you install uh, WSL uh, on Windows, this also works. This is for uh, uh, Linux users. So the first thing we check is if Docker is installed or not, right? We want to create uh, the, the container, but before that, we need to check if it's installed. Uh, to check that, we, we will say uh, docker minus feed docker and greater than devnaz. Uh, if it's not, uh, I mean, if it's not installed, we going to install it. So Docker is not installed, uh, install in Docker. So we use uh, curl to fetch the data from there. And then uh, we run the, the, the Docker file that contains everything to run the uh, Docker. And then we remove the uh, get Docker SH. What this means is we are downloading curl and wget is for downloading something from the wave, right? So we are saying that uh, 
download this and put it in the uh, file get docker.sh right? so that will be downloaded locally in the current directory and then it will run that file and then once it's done which means and it's installed then it will remove it. it it will remove that file but if it's not if this condition is not satisfied which means docker is installed so docker is already installed right and then we end the if and then we uh, need to install docker compose uh, we do the same thing right uh, if this is not uh, if this is true, which means it's not installed, then we have to install Docker Compose. So we install that from uh, this GitHub repo, uh, and then we put it in user local bin Docker Compose to be this file. That's the default uh, for Docker, right? And then uh, we simply change the a file to uh executable executable there is no installation blah blah we just download it that's it which means it's installed by default uh and then uh here we going to install uh super safe <laughs> if super uh if directory is not here is not here, which means going to clone it uh this is uh, where you get a uh, superset uh repo and then we put it inside this folder right now this inside this folder right when we run this will be created as you can see uh incubator superset so everything will be inside this folder. Uh, if it's not, uh, superset is okay. So if I run this again, since it's here, it will not. Um, Hello, I mean, yeah. Yes? I think you are, you are breaking up a uh, little. Uh, OK. The network looks fine now. Am I am I not audible? Yes, you you are now. Uh, okay. So, um, did I finish the Docker and Docker Compose? Yeah, you are on super super um, sets part. Super yeah. Set. Okay. Uh, uh, super set is one of the wave apps that we use it for. Uh, what we call it. Uh, for creating a dashboard, like redash, like metabase, right? Once you understand it, you can do every, the, the you can do this for uh, redash or for metabase. You just need to know where the the uh, repo for redash is. Uh, I, I will show you later uh, where you can get it, or for local development, how you can uh, bring it to your, uh, bring um redash to your local uh, development all right so we 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 clone it uh and then once we clone that this is the incubator superset folder right and then we cd to that folder it's just a normal uh command we use right and then uh we 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 copy the compose file into docker compose dot yaml <laughs> and then we we run it or we up the the the, the docker like docker compose up right from the command line we say docker compose up that that's what this does and then we initialize the uh, database uh, you it, it it supports lots of databases i mean superset you can connect it to any database you want uh even to the cloud and then once we do that uh we instantiate the superset uh 
uh, if it was on the command line, we use uh, superset in it. That that's it, right? But since we are writing uh, a, a shell script, we use Docker Compose, exc, and uh, superset. Once that's completed, uh, you can access superset on the local host uh, 8088. 80, 80, 80. uh, when you run this shell for the first time, it might take um, around 20 minutes. For me, it was like 18 or 19 minutes. Right? <laughs> So I'm, I'm not going to um, actually, if I do, it, it's OK. Uh, because it, it's already cloned. Actually, it, it might cloned. And let, let, let's see. Um, so where am I? Uh, I'm in week four. So that's week four. So I can, yeah, dot docker. Superset SH. Uh, I, I want to do this on the terminal. Sorry. Uh, open that. Dot. Uh, what did I call it? Docker? Yeah. Okay. Um, since it's it's already downloaded uh, and everything, it, it's, it's very fast. Now, see. Uh, the superset database is running uh, all those it's instantiated etc now it says uh, superset is completed this comes from our uh, uh, this and you call it that's completed everything is done right so we can go to uh, port 8088 uh okay uh one thing let me just log out here <coughs> that the default username and password is admin uh but if you stop here by just running the uh, dot docker superset uh sh it's not going to let you uh, in because you see that the credential admin, admin that's the user in username and password right since it's tokenized uh it's not going to allow you to log in it, it's already containerized what you'll do is you will run uh inside this there is what you call it uh, a docker a Docker folder, and you need to run uh, this Docker init sh. Once you do that, you will have access to the uh, superset. Uh, let me just, I, I hope it, it doesn't work so that I can show you. Yeah, it, it's it's already, um, already run, I, I have, run it already so it's not asking anything but for you it's not going to work so what you do is uh let me run it here you will do cd to uh incubator su superset and uh docker folder right and from here you have to run the uh, dot docker this command docker superset uh, no <laughs> that's not it it's um it which one this one this is the one that will uh set everything for the database the username the first name last name the by default the username is admin and the password will be admin you can change this file if you want, uh, like to your username, uh, to your email, etc. But I, for, for for the time being, I don't advise you to do that because it's, sometimes it's complicated. Uh, you might get stuck somewhere. 
So you need to run this one. This is very important. Uh, let me, maybe I should, oh, you can see that in later, yeah. Uh, so this is superset that will allow you to, uh, but, but, but by the way, it will uh, download the examples, uh, etc. Uh, databases, you have a that different data sets, right? And on those databases, uh, there are dashboards that have been created for you. You can take those uh, as an example. For example, if you go to dashboards, right? Uh, there is, for example, US Able Names, World Bank Data, uh, etc. So let's just click that. This one, it's there published. So if you do that, you will have the the, the dashboard. <laughs> so to create the dashboard, the first thing uh, you need to do is you need to bring your data to uh, SuperSet, right? And for that, uh, you can come here and then you can see there is a database. Uh, you can connect it to Google Sheet or any other database. So if you click connect to database, you will have different options. Uh, you have Postgres, you have uh, SQL, etc. Uh, I think there are more here. Uh, even the clouds, uh, Google BigQuery, Google Sheet, MySQL. Yeah. Uh, this all these are supported in uh, um, SuperSet. Uh, once you uh, select your database, you have to give the, the connections. Uh, you, you need to add the, the usernames, etc. And then you, you click connect, it will connect it to your uh, Postgres database. Sometimes you might not, um, it might not directly connect it because it, it, the, the ports uh, 5432 for Postgres might, might not be exposed. Uh, in that case, you need to use uh, host.docker.initial, uh, I mean internal, etc. So yeah. So the, the the main idea here is uh, you can write scripts, bash scripts to automate tasks. That that's the the, the goal of this tutorial. So um, yeah, in this case we we created um, a su super set Docker container. I hope that's clear, uh, guys. Uh, in question you can ask, uh, you can do this for Redash. But for Redash, uh, you will have, uh, I think uh, I have it here somewhere, Redash. I, I will send you this link, how, how you can set up uh, Redash locally. Where... Uh, you can check the the chat box. Uh, let me do that. Uh, so the to 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 set it, you have to. Yeah, you have to install Docker. If, if it's already installed, <laughs> you can start from here. Uh, it needs Node uh, because it's uh, developed with uh, React and Flask, I believe, uh, or Node, I don't know. Uh, so you need to follow all these instructions. And then this is where it's gonna git count uh, http github.com git redash, redash, and then you go into redash 
and then you say yarn and then you compile make uh, make build and then make uh, build and then uh, you can create the database it is for Chris obviously and then you start the the, the container and will have a redash uh, I think I have done that also uh, this one let me open a new terminal cd to redash dashboard uh, okay so I need to go inside redash uh, but by the way this also have a, 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 a docker file where redash uh, where is the docker file hmm. yeah there you you can check all this how they manage to do that and you can also check the docker compose file how they set up the different environments the redash uh wait the po i mean the yeah that's that's postgres uh and it uses read read this or edis uh they they include email the workers and the servers they, it's it's everything set, set up for you to use so once i'm here what i can do is since i already did all of the instructions i believe i can start from compose up uh, make up i think i mean docker compose up or make up i think yeah and it will it will ask you um a password but if you do this if you do this, it will not ask you your password. I I, I uh, missed this command. That's why I'm getting the uh, password. Now it's, it says redash postgres is started, redash email, exit, right? Now I say, uh, where is that? Uh, Oh, uh, I can directly go to the, the uh, URL. It's started already, right? So that's localhost uh, colon 5001. Uh, localhost 5001. So that, that's redash. Uh, it will ask at the first time it will ask you a username a password email etc so i use my password i mean my email so when i do that i have a redash so you can create dashboards but we don't have any uh, data so you have to connect your uh, redash with a data source as you can see it here it says connect uh, data source um let me post grace i haven't tried this one uh okay mintelcom data i don't know i'm not sure if it's gonna work localhost uh 5432 uh, username host grace post grace and the database name is post grace uh, it might not work because this port is not exposed uh, i believe anyway let's see it uh, what does it say test connection yeah uh, as you can see connection for server localhost port failed 
uh, so you you need to use uh, that's what you call it host docker internal i believe that might work um tcp ip yeah anyway you need to figure this out uh this is not uh, i just want to show you yeah uh, that's all i have if you guys have any questions uh you can ask um barnabas so this means we can use uh redash or superset for the dashboard uh yeah it, I, I mean it, it says select one of uh the uh let me just open the i i, I don't know uh -huh. yeah you can use one of the three or the four uh i think there are four Yeah, so uh, for choosing the dashboard platform, the following are the list of recommended dashboard systems that you may, can, you may compare and select one from, right? Uh, th this, you are not going to use them. Uh, you're gonna select one of these. And I, I believe you have uh, another tutorial in the afternoon. Uh, about what's a good uh, dashboard for uh, BI for business intelligence. So you 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 can choose one of them. Uh, yeah, either Superset or Redash. I have I've never tried Metabase. Yeah, Barnabas, is that clear? You can use one of them. Any other question? Is everything clear? Uh, Abraham, yeah. Uh, I have one question about uh, the database. Uh, yeah. should, uh, should we use uh, only uh, the local database? Are we supposed to use, uh, I mean, are we supposed to set up uh, a remote uh, database for for this week challenge what do you mean linux database abraham hello hello abraham hello uh, uh, did you hear my question yeah what do you mean linux database uh, you can use any data source uh, from anywhere. Uh, in your uh, challenge document, you are asked to uh, load, dump, and restore. You going to do all those using the script files. Either using Python or um, Batch. Yeah, my uh, question. My question is, uh, uh, yeah. there are uh, there are two ways to set up the database. We can set up set it up uh, on our local machine, uh, or we can uh, we can set it up on a remote server uh, like cloud or something. Uh, so yeah. I, what I want to ask is, uh, is it enough for, for us to use uh, the the local database for for this uh, project? uh i i don't know but yeah you can use but is, is there a specific task to load your data to the cloud i don't think uh you can no just use your local postgres database uh i think that that's that's enough 
Okay, okay, this, that's what I wa wanted to know. Okay, thank you. But, but it says once you have that data, you are asked to uh, do data processing using KDRAW, KDRAW and then uh, you are asked to load those data to remote cloud servers or something. Uh, write a script that migrate data tables to remote instance. Yeah, yeah, about that part. So if our database is uh, on our so, local so machine, you are, how you are can we do that? So you are, you are migrating your data database tables to a remote instance, right? Uh, probably that maybe uh, Google big query to somewhere. Yeah, you can, you, you have to write the script that can do this and also migrate your SQL queries and dashboards to uh, a remote instance. For this, you need to write a bash script or a Python script if you want. Uh, what does KDRO do? Does it, it might be related to KDRO. Okay, let's, um, let me just try it and maybe uh, I will get back to you. All right. What about the others? Are you guys clear with the uh, concepts that we discussed? Uh, any reactions? Is everything clear? Yabsra, <laughs> Abraham, what about the others? If you if you guys have any question, please ask. Is it clear or is it not clear? Uh, Daniel, thank you, it's clear. All right, uh, if there is no any question, we can stop it here uh, and have a good day.